Right, so now that we have the storybook portion squared, I think now is a good time to start working on the unit tests. And as I mentioned before, for this tutorial, we're going to be using the Jest framework. So let's go to the Get Started section. So what we need to do is we need to install Jest as a dev dependency. But to make it work in a React project, we have to do more setup than that. So besides installing Jest on its own, we also need to install quite a few other dependencies. So we need to install Babel Jest as well as Babel Core. So let's go ahead and copy those two and I'm going to go back to the terminal. So let's do npm install dash d jest as well as babel jest and also babel core with that version. So let's install all of those. So now once we do that, let's try npx jest and we're going to see that we don't have any unit tests to run. So let's actually go back to our source folder. So inside of ellipsis folder, I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it ellipsis.test.js. Now, as you can see from the regex in the terminal, there's quite a few different ways that you can approach this. So for example, you can create a uh, test directory with two underscores before and after. It's going to look for every single JavaScript or JSX file. And it's also going to look for any optional spec or test keyword before the extension name. So in this case, I'm going to follow this convention, file name or component name dot test .js. So from here we can do import of ellipsis and in fact let's import from this directory. So we already have a barrel file so we're just going to import the default from there. And let's go to the snapshot testing section. So from here we can copy the base example. So let me go back, let me paste it. I'll just put in the ellipsis in here. I'll remove the link. And now to convert our component into JSON format we need to install another dependency called react test renderer. So let me switch which back I'll do a quick install of that dependency. I'm going to save the file so we're going to render ellipsis without any props. So this will be the ellipsis component and as you can see we got a few warnings from ESLint. So in order to go around that we can install a plugin which is called ESLint plugin jest. So now this one can help us set up reasonable defaults. In fact, if you look at the recommended section, we can extend from plugin just recommended. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to install the plugin. So let's install it and then I'll switch back in here. I'm going to copy this string so we can extend the recommended configuration. And now in eslintrc.json, I'm going to add this string to the end of the array. So let's save the file. And now if we go back to our ellipsis test, as you can see, the warnings go away. So now let's go back to the terminal and I'll try to do npx jest. So as you can see, we're going to have a failed test. In this case, it's failing to interpret the import syntax. And I think I know why. So if we go back to our Babel RC, what we are doing at the moment is that we're telling Babel to ignore ES modules, so it's not going to transpile them down to common JS. And now because of that, our unit tests are going to be failing because Node.js cannot interpret the import export syntax on its own. So what we can do is we can set up a dedicated section for unit tests. Now for that, we can add a special key known as environment ENV. And inside of that object, we're going to specify a test environment. And this is where we're going to put the presets. And it's simply going to be an array of Babel env without any configuration. So using the default config and also Babel slash react. This way for our unit test, we're going to be using this config and this is going to apply the Babel env and Babel react presets using the defaults. But to build our package using rollup, we're going to be using this setup at the top. All right, so let's go back and try to run it again. So I'm going to do npx jest and now we're getting a syntax error of unexpected token because we're trying to import styles and now jest is not able to interpret the styles.css file on its own. Now that's easy to fix. So if we go back to the Jest configuration. There's a section for using Jest with Webpack. So now if we scroll down a bit, you're going to find a section for handling static assets. So for something like this, we can create a file. We can call it stylemock.js and it's going to export an empty object. And this one is going to be used for our styles. So all of the class names are going to be looked up off of that object. So I'm going to copy this configuration for Jest. We're going to have to go back to our package JSON. And now in here, I'm going to add a section at the bottom. We don't care about image files, but we do care about CSS files though. So I'm just going to target any CSS files. And from there, we're going to go to the mocks directory and I'm just going to call it styles.js. So let's create a new directory mocks. Let's create the file and we'll just do a module.exports of an object. So now if we run the test again, it looks like I messed up the import. Now, of course, if we go back in here, this is supposed to be a named import because we are exporting an ellipsis component from index.js. Let me save that and I'm going to run 
the test again. Right, so this time it succeeds. So we get a single test passing. And now if we go back, we're also going to notice a snapshot directory. And then this one is going to contain the snapshot file. So this will basically be the output of our component. And now if our component changes in any way, so let's say if I were to go back and let's say I was to add a new div in here. Now if we run the test, you're going to see that this time it fails because something changed in the snapshot. Now, of course, we can also update them. So let's do npx jest dash u to update the snapshot. This time it's passing, but if I bring it back, if we do npx jest once again, it's going to fail. And of course, this way we can just simply update the snapshots whenever the code changes. So in the same fashion, we're going to create tests for the other components. I'm just going to copy it and paste it to ring and ripple directories. So now this one is going to be ring.test.js and this one is going to be ripple. So we're going to import ring and let's also output it and I'll do the same thing for ripple. So let's put it in there and now I'll go back and let's do npx jest. So this will generate the two snapshots for the two new tests. And now instead of running the tests from the terminal, we can actually create a script. So I'll go back to package.json. Let's create a test script. So this will simply invoke jest like this. So from then on, we can do npm test. This will do the same thing. So it's going to run all the unit tests in our suite. But we can also have jest run in the background and also monitor the changes in the file system. So let's add another test. We're going to call this one test colon watch. And we could do jest with the dash dash watch option. So in contrast, if we do npm run test colon watch, this one is not going to exit. In fact, it's going to look for changes in our file system. And let's say if I go back, once again, I add something to the ellipsis, let's say a span and I save it. Now this time it's going to fail because one of these snapshots is not matching. But if I change it back, it's back to green. So this way we can actually work on the components and have the test suite run in the background. So it's pretty useful. Now besides that, we can also get the coverage report from our tests. So I'm going to do npm test, but this time I'm going to pass in the coverage option to just and because it's going to just and not the test script itself, I'm going to also have to put the two dashes in front. So let's try that. And this time, as you can see, we get a full coverage report for three of our components. In fact, if we go back to our project, we now have a coverage folder. So now if we copy the path to the index file, I'll go back to Chrome and let's open it. And this time, as you can see, we get a nice UI. This way we could see the coverage reports for all of our components. This way we can see if there's any code that's not covered in our components. Now, the only issue is we'll have to add that folder to git ignore. Let's see, we have the coverage folder that we need to add. I'm going to also have to add it to ESLint ignore. And just for a good measure, I'm also going to add it to prettier ignore. So this way, if we accidentally try to save a file in that report, it doesn't get messed up. So finally, I'm going to add a new script. So let's go back. I'll add test colon coverage. So let's do just dash dash coverage. So once that's done, let's do git status. Once again, I'm going to add all files and let's do a commit add just snapshot tests and let's push it. So now it would also be nice to test the files that are going into a commit. So let's say if I go to the ellipsis component, if I were to modify it, there's nothing that prevents me from doing a git add on that file and then doing a commit knowing that the test command will fail, but the commit itself will succeed because we don't have any tests running on a commit. If I were to do npm test, of course, it's going to fail. So what we need to do is we need to add a pre-commit hook. So let me just do a git reset to undo the commit. So now if I go back to the package JSON file, we're going to add a command to run the test suite. Now the issue with this command is that it's going to run the entire test suite. And even though we only have three small tests, eventually the code base is going to grow. So there's going to be a lot more tests to run. It'd be better if you could only test the files that were modified. So in this case, only the ellipsis component was changed. So it only makes sense to test that individual component. Well, if we were to go to the CLI options section in the documentation for Jest, there is an option known as find related test. And this one is perfect for our use case, which is the pre-commit hook. So what we can do is we can go back in here. I'm going to add a new script. Let's do test staged. This way we're going to test the staged files. So let's do find related tests like this. And I'll change the script in the lint stage section from npm test to npm run test staged. So if I were to go and see the changes, we have package JSON and the ellipsis component staged for a commit. 
So now if I do git add package JSON alone, let's do a git commit test. This one will succeed because no unit test related files were modified. But if I do git add, let's do dash p. So I'll add the component. Let's do another commit. Once again, test. As you can see, this one does fail because one of these snapshot is not matching the JSON of the components. So I'll go back to the terminal. Let me just do a git reset once again, and I'll undo the change in the ellipsis component, but I'm going to leave off the test staged command. So we're going to use it in the future when working on the project. So let's do a git status. Once again, let's add package JSON. Once again, commit run just on pre-commit. So now if I do git log, we now have the commit, so we should be able to push and we should be done now.